Blazer on today's Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jaher on Twitter. So what is Blazer? Well, it's a new framework from Microsoft that does web pages, but it does them in an interesting way. It uses web assemblies as opposed to using JavaScript. So a web assembly is a compile format that is actually kind of difficult to interface with the DOM. You actually have to write it your own custom shim layer. So Microsoft has actually done that work for us and created a fairly elegant web framework on top of WASM. So that's the reason I took a look at it. This is not a paid endorsement for Microsoft. I don't have any connection to Microsoft. I just thought it was really cool to see WASM done in a different way. And I hope you'll find it interesting as well. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the code. So here's the homepage for Blazor, and this is what we're gonna use. And this is the app that we're gonna build. It's the usual Pokemon filter app. It means it's gonna load a JSON file that has a bunch of Pokemon in it, and it's going to provide a filterable list to the customer. It kinda checks out a bunch of state things, as well as asynchronous IO. So as you can see, we can just type in here and filter. Pretty nice. So to get this started, I'm going to bring up Visual Studio 2019 from Mac. I have that pre-installed. And then create a new project. Select the Blazor WebAssembly app option. I'm not going to use any authentication. I'll call it Pokemon Blazor. All right, now it's gone off and built that. And the first thing I'm going to do is just hit play. Now, after a bit of chewing, it comes up. I will say that at the beginning, I had a problem where it wasn't coming up. And it wasn't until I looked at the end of the error log that I found out that there was some credentials issue. And thankfully, they actually had a a command line in there. So I just copy and paste the command line, ran it, and then it ran just fine. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that you do and you never have to do again. So I don't know how to undo that so that I can show it to you. All right, so here's the boilerplate app. It's a spa. It's got three different routes. It's actually based on Bootstrap, which is kind of interesting on the CSS side. So there's the home page. They've got a counter page. It shows you how to do basic state stuff. And then fetch data, which shows you how to do basic data fetching. So we are going to use some of this code as a template. All right, let's go back to the IDE and then have a look around. There's a pages directory that's got a bunch of razor pages in it. Again, that's the counter, the fetch data example and the index, which would be the home page. There's www root, which has any kind of static assets you want in it. And then there's shared, which has also has some razor files. Notably, that includes the main layout. To start it all up, there's program.cs. CS is the extension for C Sharp. It basically just launches app, which is also defined in that same directory as app.razor. So let's go take a look at that. This one is just the larger route frame, essentially. And the primary thing is the main layout in here. So let's go take a look at main layout. And I'm gonna remove some of this stuff. I'm gonna remove the nav menu and then also this part of the top. And then I'm going to delete the nav menu, as well as a survey prompt. And then what I'm going to primarily modify is index.razor. So currently that's just got a hello world in it. So I'm gonna replace that with my own hello blazer. Now let's go take a look over at fetch data. That's got the list of temperatures, as well as this handy code for doing this on initialized async, which is actually gonna go off and make an HTTP request. So we'll be using that as a boilerplate. And then here's the counter, which shows how to do some basic state. You've got this private int counter, which is then used both in the template, but also in the code. And then there's a click handler for, to increment that count. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy, I would say. But let's concentrate our efforts on index.razor. So let's stop and then start the server again. 
honestly, I couldn't find an option for hot reload and it doesn't hot reload. It's probably just me. Hopefully that's not a thing, but I never know. Okay, it looks pretty good. So let's close out some windows. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a code block and then create a variable called filter, which is private. That's gonna hold the value of the filter. Then I'll create an input tag and give it its value of filter, as well as a class of form control. And I'll just put in there testing just to make sure that that binding is working properly. All right, let's stop and start again. Okay, looks pretty good. But is it two-way binding? Let's go check it out by trying out a div here. And let's fire that up. And no, it's not natively two-way data binding with this. So we're gonna need to get an event handler that's tied onto that input that then updates that string. But for the time being, let's just get rid of that. Now the next thing to do is to go get the data. So I'm gonna go back over to fetch data and grab all the code and then paste it into the code in index. All right, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna look for Pokemon JSON. We don't have it yet. So let's go back over to our browser. Now this is a gist that has a list of Pokemon in it. The link is in the description. So I'm gonna hit that raw button that's gonna give us the raw JSON. I'm just gonna copy and paste that into a new file called Pokemon JSON. All right, looks pretty good. Let's zip up to the top and I'll show you what it looks like. Every Pokemon has an ID as well as a name that has multiple variants. It's got a list of strings which are its type. And that's all I really want for this. So I'm gonna change weather forecast to Pokemon. So let's change the date to the integer ID. And then a string array for the type. And now for the name, we gotta do something a little bit different. I'm gonna create a dictionary that goes from a string to a string. And a dictionary in this case is like an object. It's got keys and values. And we'll call that name. So that maps to name and we can get rid of the temperature. And then finally, I need to fix this HTTP issue. And to do that, I'm gonna go back to the fetch data and right at the top, there is this injected HTTP client. So let's go grab that, paste that in there, and it looks good. No errors at the moment. One last thing, let's change forecast to Pokemon. All right, now we've got our Pokemon. So the next thing to do is to go create a table to put that in. So first we're gonna say, if we don't have any Pokemon, then say that we're loading. Otherwise, let's go create the table. So we'll give it a class of table. And then a T body. And then within that, we're gonna to need to loop through the Pokemon. So we'll use for each. And then var p and Pokemon, that's gonna, for every Pokemon, we're gonna get one value for p. We'll create a row. And within that, a td. And let's do the type first. So we'll just say, we want to use a, the join function on string. where the first value is the separator, so that'd be just a comma. And then the second is the array, so that'd be p.type. Now let's try this out. Okay, looking pretty good. Can't filter though, obviously, I haven't written that functionality yet, but we are going and getting that JSON and we are putting it on the screen, so that's pretty good so far. Next thing we wanna do is show the English name. So let's go create a new TD. And then within that, p.name. And then we're gonna use the get value or default method. 
And the first element there is to say the key. So we'll say English. And the default value would be nothing. And let's put it in a header while we're here. And then try it out. Okay, there you go. So that's not too bad. Again, got to get that filter going. So the first thing to do there is to create a new callback. So we'll call this on filter changed. It takes a change event args argument. You know, much the same way that in React we get on change and then we get an event, very similar sort of thing. So now we're going to set that value for filter to the incoming new event value. And then return that we've completed the task. Now we want to search using lowercase, so let's create a lowercase copy of filter. We'll call it lowercase filter, and then use filter to lower. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new value called filtered Pokemon, which is the filtered version of the Pokemon list. And then first set filtered Pokemon to Pokemon. And go back into our list and replace the for each with filtered Pokemon. And so now to create the filtered Pokemon, we need to filter on that filter text, the lowercase filter text. So we're going to do a where clause on Pokemon. And I believe this is part of C Sharp's link functionality, L-I-N-Q. And that's like a query language that's actually built in to the frameworks uh, that Microsoft has. So a where clause takes a predicate, which in this case would be a function. So it's going to give us a Pokemon. We're going to go grab that name getter from up here. And then to lower that. And then look for the index of that lowercase filter. And if it's greater than negative one, then we're good. Now, the only thing left to do is to coerce this back into a Pokemon array. And to do that, we'll use to array. Now let's try it out again. And it's not working, but that's because we have yet to actually connect that on filter change to the actual input. So in this case, we just need to add on input and then give it the on filter changed. And then we can filter. How nice is that? So pretty clean, right? So we got that input, and then we've got the if conditional, which is actually kind of nice, right in the middle of the template code. The table creator is a pretty standard thing you might see in any kind of system, like an Angular, or React, or Vue. Formatting the TDs, I would say, is a little pedantic. I mean, it would be nice to be able to get easier access to name.english, but it's fine. And then down in the code, we've got our template variables up at the top, which is nice. We got our, our on load here with the on initialized async. And that goes off and grabs the Pokemon code. We've got our event handler in on filter change. It's pretty easy. Basically just updates filter and then sets that filtered Pokemon. And then down at the bottom, we have any kind of type definitions we need. And in this case, that means Pokemon. So pretty clear, clean code. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit about Visual Studio, C Sharp, a WASM application, although that's kind of hidden underneath the surface. All right, if you have any questions or comments, I will answer to them to the extent that I can down in the comments section down below. I'm not a Visual Studio, C Sharp, or Blazor expert by any means, but I will try and get you the right resources. Of course, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. There is the Discord server that you should check out. Always fun to talk in there. 
There is the newsletter you should sign up for and get access to these videos a day early. And of course, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and always try new things like Blazer.